All right, people, welcome to my channel today. This is Max. The good news I bring for you today is that, as of today, <laughs> we are no longer where we were yesterday because of this NSAS protest. Nigeria is going to witness a rebirth. Thank you for always supporting me. Click on that uh, uh, subscription button. Just click on it now. Click on the uh, turn on the notification bell too, so that each time I make a new post, you too can be part of it. We rise by lifting others. I'm always proud of you. I'm proud of you for always supporting me. Thank you. I'm grateful. God will bless you. For okay, on our topic today, Faust speaks with CNN correspondents. You know, Faust is the son of of the senior advocate of Nigeria, Falana. So Faust's name is Folarin Falana. AKA bad guy. He has been one of the arrowhead of this NSAS protest. He has always been speaking on behalf of the youth. He has always been speaking against bad policy, bad governance, police brutality, and every other sundry issues. So in this particular matters on ground, NSAS protest, FAST has played a key role. And the role that he has played cannot be underestimated. And on the other news, Bonaboy, also a Nigerian musician, celebrity musician, also speaks on the NSAS protests from London. A lot of Nigerian celebrities are speaking and their voice has actually yielded a very positive impact compared to the past where they normally live, I don't care. It's only some of my business life when it has to do with issue of national concern and also in our quiet state we witnessed a um, turnout of um, destruction when youth also went again on NSAS protests and from that incident a guy was shot dead and like what happened in Lekki the people took to the street and started vandalizing properties, you know, they destroy so many things and truly we think this is not necessary. Shop owners are actually crying, you know, as a result of destruction that are being carried out by talks, good looms, who hijack the answers and peaceful protests to be committing havoc. People, these things are not necessary. We need to cut our excesses. We have gone outside what we intended for. Please, even even when life is lost, it is not expected that we should lose a life in the course of these protests. Because these protests have been very peaceful. It started from social media. So things that started trending from social media are supposed to not to bring about death, physical death. If you cannot kill someone on social media, I don't see why we should die here. So we should stop all these destructive tendencies. We should stop venting our anger wrongly. And um, also in the news, <laughs> this is I think this is what should be done, not by going to destroy other people's property. A Nigerian envoy in Australia was attacked by NSAS protesters. Nigerian in Australia attacked a Nigerian ambassador to Australia. And we saw him being <laughs> being rescued by Australian police. I mean, they would have given it to him hot, hot. He don't reach here. Nobody is ready to take any shit from anybody. All right. Also, in the news, in Lagos, in the palace of Oba of Lagos, a lot of things have been carted away, including dollars. I mean, dollar in coffee. Man, these people are so heartless. They are so heartless. Sometimes they don't rate us. Why are you keeping all these things? These things were meant for the people. But because you are privileged to be the one taking delivery of this thing, and you hurt them, when the people are going out crying of hunger, hunger is killing people. That's why criminality is on the increase. But the, you know, the leaders, the people that were entrusted with our position of leadership, with our resources, they are keeping this thing, even when they have had enough. This is unfair. That is why we are struggling. That is why the society does not balance. That is why there is no job, hunger, and robbery, kidnapping here and there, and equally resolved 
in police being brutal because even policemen are not happy in the uniform. Their take home is so it's so it's so small that they are not even encouraging the job. But along the line, they are saying, if I leave the job, what will I even do? So sometimes we may not even blame the police, but it is these our leaders that we entrust them with our positions that we should be held accountable. So on the news, let us see what we have in the news today. First, we want to start with files. Listen to the interview. I'm Christiana Monpour in London. The United States and the United Nations are strongly condemning the violence that's erupted in Nigeria. And these are some of the latest images, smoke billowing into the sky amid reports of a prison in Lagos being set ablaze. It comes after security forces open fire at a peaceful demonstration against police brutality on Tuesday. Witnesses and Amnesty International say at least 12 demonstrators were killed in Lagos, which is Africa's most populous city. And across the country, Amnesty says a total of 38 have been killed on Tuesday alone. But the Lagos state governor denies there were any deaths. This brutality in one of Africa's biggest cities comes amid a global uprising for justice and equal rights. And powerful voices from Joe Biden to Beyonce have joined in denouncing this violence. Activist and renowned rapper Folarin Falano, better known by his stage name, Fowles, led one of the first protests two weeks ago, and he's been taking part ever since. And he's joining me now from Lagos. Fowles, welcome to the program. We're, we're, we're coming to you because you've obviously got, you know, the pulse of the people. You've got 7 million Instagram followers, and you have been organizing um, some of these protests and joining in. Can you tell me how this all started? What turned this city into violence um wow it's it's really crazy for everyone out here it's um it's a horrible horrible time and if this was yesterday i probably wouldn't have been able to take this call because i was extremely distraught it was it was a, it was a horrible horrible incident but um it started probably about two weeks ago roughly about two weeks ago on the 8th of, of october myself and another artist named run town we had shared on our um, twitter and instagram pages and we were going to do a walk, just a march, a peaceful protest against all forms of police brutality, all forms of um, police misconduct in general. And we, we did that with the hashtag NSARS. Um, the hashtag was already in existence. You know, this is something that was already a big thing on social media, but no one had actually gone ahead to do a physical um, protest. So we decided to take that extra step. Um, so we went out on the 8th. Uh, I think it was a Tuesday. We went out and... Probably we're expecting maybe around about 50, 100 people, but um, <laughs> probably got around about 2,000 people or so that came out on, on that very day. And it was it was huge. You know, we, we did a march to um, to a police station, which has um, some high-ranking officers here in Lagos. And we handed in a petition just saying that the youth um, as a group were very, very unhappy with, you know, the way things, things were going. And we, we were really, really furious about... Um, police brutality, police harassment, police extortion. And, you know, it, 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 enough enough is enough, basically. Everyone was standing up. You know, everyone was lending their voice to this to this particular cause. So um, from that day up until now, back to back to back, it's been um, a different state in, in, in the country because there's 36 states in total. Right. But we, if, apart from the, that very one on that day, we didn't even have to call... For, um, for people to come out in other states, everyone just trooped out, and, you know, on their own. It's been it's it's been crazy. It's been really really okay, crazy. Files, and, um, yeah. Let me just interrupt you a bit because I just want to ask you so that our viewers are clear. And SARS is the hashtag and it's the movement. SARS, for everybody to understand, is a special police unit, right? It's the special anti-robbery squad. What is exactly. it about them? And apparently they, they are, they're not in uniform, they're plain clothes, and, and for years you have been protesting against them. What is it that you're actually protesting? What do they do? It's all forms of, it's all forms of violence. It's all forms of um, brutality. And um, they, they, the, the, the offenses that they're supposed to be protecting us against is pretty much what they, is pretty much the offenses they end up committing. Um, the SARS stands for State Anti-Robbery Squad, but they're, they're committing the armed robbery. The 
because we hear about numerous cases where they stop young people just because you look fresh, just because you look, you know, you look young and you look like you're making a lot of money. They'll stop you, they'll harass you, they'll go through your phone. And um, sometimes they check, they, they, they search for messages from, from your bank, for example, so they can see your uh, bank account balance. And when they do that, they drive you to an ATM, get you to withdraw money, and, and you know, before, before they let you go, if, if they can't get money off you, they lock you up. We hear about several, several cases where they've locked people up and those people disappeared because they were eventually killed. So it's, it's, it's really, really crazy. If, if you're not as lucky when you encounter them, they could shoot you on the spot. This is all forms of violence. They beat people up. They, you know, they torture people. They murder. They, they, they commit armed robbery. It's everything. It's everything. And there have been so many cases. The, uh, the, the SARS unit has been disbanded. They announced in 2017, announced in 2018, announced in 2019. Now in 2020, after we started these protests, they announced again. And in the same breath, announced that they were replacing that unit with a new unit called the Special Weapons and Tactics Unit. And it's just, they, they just think we're stupid because you're literally just renaming this unit and expecting us to say, oh, yay, wow, that's great. It's, can, I ask, it's, can I ask you something? It's insensitive. You, I want to ask you what you're demanding, but first I want to ask you, because you alluded to, you know, the stressful situation and the lack of safety. There are a lot of young people who we've reached out to, a lot of people who are very upset and very, you know, like you, but didn't want to appear on camera because they're afraid for their lives. Are you afraid for your own safety? I'm not afraid for my life. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not afraid for my life because um, the, where we are right now, I, I feel like I could easily die by anything else anyway. You know, like there's, there's, they share, oh, man, I, I don't even know where to start from. We have non-existent healthcare, for example. We have a seriously high level of poverty. There's unemployment. It's, it's, it's in a, it's, we're in a critical state because of how much corruption and just mismanagement of, of funds that we, you know, we continue to see on a daily basis. So if I don't come out to sort of complain about the state of things, I could sit down and you know, I could I could have an accident on my way to work or something, and I could die as a result of that because the state of the healthcare is nothing to write home about. We don't even have proper hospitals. Our hospitals aren't well equipped. You know, people have to travel abroad to get proper healthcare. And every Nigerian, and we keep on saying this, every single Nigerian is one sickness away from passing away. Uh, basically, you know, saying that they're coming, they're supporting you. Do you feel a sense of solidarity? Um, in a way, yeah, and um, you know, it's it's. But I feel I feel more. It's more depressing to to think about what what we're going through because um, you know, the, the the whole Black Lives Matter movement happened in the United States, and um, it's more that's a more complicated issue, you know, with racism and all that stuff. But out here, it's it's black people doing 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 the same thing to to their brothers. It's it's us. It's us on us violence. It's. It's even more depressing to think about. So it's it's a really really terrible state that, that we're in right now. And um, there was a horrible horrible massacre um, that went on on, on on Tuesday. And as a result, everywhere is up in flames. There's looting. There's shooting. There's it's a chaotic state right now. I I don't even know where we're going from here. And Files, I mean, you know, we always have to remind everybody, you know, you're talking about the biggest city in Africa, it's Nigeria's commercial capital, and this is a very rich country. It's had a hugely significant economy. Do you think the government will pay attention and what precisely are you demanding to end this situation now? The government has to pay attention. All we're asking for is not to be killed. All we're asking for is not to be ex extorted. All we're asking for is is not to be robbed by the officers that are supposed to be protecting our lives and property. All we're asking for is not to be raped. All we're asking for is not to be beaten up. Yeah, I don't think it's too much to ask. There's so much, so much evil that these officers are perpetrating. Um, you know, under on, under the the, the police um, in in the police uniform. And all we're asking is that this stops. 
We've continued to, to protest against this for about two weeks straight, and the government has just continued to drag its feet. They're not really giving any real response to, to what we're complaining about, and it's very, very worrying to think about. Files, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Okay, people, this is how much you can actually take on this particular video. Please catch you in the next video. Thank you.